This is John Hancock here, and I would like to show you uh, a video. of how huge is a boxed Atom computer. Um, it's like 40 inches long. I don't know how they stack these things in stores. Anyways. Around the year 2010, a burgeoning retro gaming scene on YouTube welcomed the immortal John Hancock. Despite initial infrequent uploads and years-long breaks, over the coming decade John managed to amass a huge collection and completed full sets such as his N64, Virtual Boy and subsets like the Sega Classic line. The channel showcasing his gargantuan collection in the relatively early days of YouTube skyrocketed him to internet fame, and he remains one of the biggest retro gaming YouTubers to this day, alongside the angry video game nerd and Metal Jesus. Nowadays, John uploads regularly to an audience of 121,000 subscribers, most of which nary have a bad word to say about him, but you know all this. That's not what you're here for. You're here for the real behind the scenes truth. The truth about the immortal John Hancock. It's hard to estimate from his videos just how many games John has in his collection. In the handful of Game Room Tour videos he's done, he never gives an exact number, nor has he shared a link to his collector's cloud or similar collector database software. But the important question is, how did he amass such a collection really? Well, it's been reported by many ex-fans of his channel, such as Afro Gamer Dude, that they have sent him ultra rare video games. And I actually have a letter here from Afro Gamer Dude describing the whole scenario and is also entitled it One Reason Why John Hancock Sucks and is Really Bad and is a Poopy Head. So when Afro Gamer Dude sent John along a bundle of rare games, instead of saying thank you, Hancock apparently replied with an email saying these video games were worthless and fake and that he'd taken them to a thrift store, thrown them in the bin, smashed them with a sledgehammer. <laughs> or even the worst of these, allowed his kids to touch the unprotected cases and play the games. Over the years, John has clearly had many donations, yet just like the church, he always needs more. Frequent videos include John's so-called Holy Grails, but how many Holy Grails can one man possibly have? Clearly John's desire for collecting has manipulated fans to send him hordes of games. How many of these games are already in his collection and he's just pretending he doesn't have them, then selling the duplicates for profit? Internet historians have theorised that this scheme has been going back years, with some believing that Hancock has never even purchased a single game with his own money, instead spending it on luxurious extensions to his mansion. Siding's been put on, hasn't been painted yet. Roof is on. Really happy with how it turned out nice and straight. Afro Gamer Dude also estimated in a video that John's full collection would span the circumference of the earth 10,000 times if the boxes were laid end to end. But unfortunately, his channel was taken down after John Hancock hired some top level hackers. The hackers revealed his password for both his YouTube and OnlyFans account were I Heart the Immortal John Hancock 69. Since Hancock rose to prominence on YouTube, he has consistently claimed that he is collecting to open up a video game museum where his collection would go on display. 
When people comment on his videos asking for updates on the progress of this museum, they are immediately deleted and banned from commenting on the channel. This wouldn't be half as bad if he didn't also collect donations for the museum via his Patreon page, which he plugs every video, saying he can't yet afford the space to set up a museum. Meanwhile, he has amassed millions in donations from hopeful fans, and then, as mentioned before, built a lavish and luxurious extension to his mansion. Until recently, the Patreon page read that Hancock was struggling to pay his bills because he was spending so much on buying video games all the time, but this was amended of course after backlash from the critics. Nevertheless, Hancock is still making six figures a month towards a museum which never seems to materialise. Likewise, in response to criticisms that he's not sharing his collection with the world, per his stated intentions, Hancock claims that his collection has been on display at various gaming expos. No evidence of these expos exists, however, and in one video, Hancock even claims his collection had just been picked up by an expo organiser, despite the games clearly being on the floor just below the frame. You might have heard of previous Guinness Book of Records entrant for largest game collection, Michael Thomason. Well, when he came to auction off his collection, he stated that he did so out of necessity, because he had to pay healthcare costs for his family. The full story may shock you. A truth unearthed by my expert source and retro gaming's own Sherlock Holmes, YouTuber Radical Rick. Rick discovered documents pertaining to a freak accident involving a box of games falling on Thomason's family from the roof of a Portland Expo Center. Not that any retro gaming expos go on at such places. Which games might you ask? Well, none other than one of John Hancock's holy grails, a huge pile of Game Vision boxes and cartridges. All these are very rare. This one is extremely hard to find. Now, complete in box, I have two. I've managed to score over time. And this is what the box looks like. Having been a former mega fan of Hancock's, Radical Rick made the connection straight away. But the authorities believed it was more likely a batch of games that Thomason himself had misplaced. The outcome, you ask? Well, Thomason had to auction off his entire collection for a very low price and to a most likely immortal bidder. Another great friend of the channel, Overthink Gaming, has sent me his research papers on the hidden identity of John Hancock. Um, he sent me a letter here. Hey mate, here's my research papers and also some shoes because your background needs pimping. Enough of that childish gaming shit. Um, I don't really wear trainers though, so yeah. Anyway, in his papers, Overthink explains that John Hancock is, of course, a stage name taken from the American statesman prominent around the American Revolution, but his real name is John Barker, the little-known fifth son of Ma Barker, leader of the Barker Carpus Gang, one of the longest-lived criminal gangs during the Depression era. Don't be silly, I hear you say. John is far too young to have lived in that era. Well, they don't call him the immortal John Hancock for nothing, did they now? Overthink Gaming headed an archaeological expedition and uncovered documents pertaining to a John Barker active in the gang that would claim to be collecting toy wooden train sets in order to set up a museum showcasing the biggest and best train set yet to be seen in the US. During the New Orleans train robbery of 1835, many of John Barker's toy trains were thought to be lost before this new expedition by Overthink Gaming uncovered a veritable treasure trove of the toys around the site of the train robbery. So there you have it folks, there's gonna be haters, there's gonna be the hardcore John Hancock fans coming after this video and trying to censor me. But the truth has been laid bare right here. And you know it's true, because I said it in a YouTube video that is all about honest criticism of the retro gaming scene. Because that's what being a retro gaming YouTuber is all about, criticising other retro gaming YouTubers. I've been Jake of The Retro Perspective. 
Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And this is John Hancock. Thank you for looking at this video.